In this video, I'm going to show you how you can return to a slide but not play the original audio. I'm Paul Wilson and I make videos about e-learning, specifically the authoring tool Adobe Captivate. If you like what I'm doing here today, by all means, like, subscribe to my channel and share this video with all of your e-learning colleagues. I've received this question a lot over the years and that's how I can return to a slide without playing the original audio and going back to Adobe Captivate Classic and even earlier versions of the all new Adobe Captivate, I've come up with very complicated ways, you know, by using variables and triggering audio and things like that. But I think I have the definitive solution that makes it very easy to do. And all you need to understand is how bookmarks work. Let's get started. Okay, so I have a first slide here with a start button. All of my other slides have some kind of navigation button on them. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that my play bar is turned off. Probably a good idea anytime you do any kind of branching course, because in this case here, the play bar is just going to add confusion because it only works in a linear fashion. So let's get rid of that. I've already recorded some slide audio here. Now, the first time I arrive on the slide, I want to use a bookmark to pause the slide before we hear any audio. That's the magic here. So I'm going to click on the bookmark icon here and we'll just call this paused slide. Okay, that's going to show up in our interactions properties inspector here. And I only need one action here and that's going to be to pause the timeline. Okay, click done, and that's taken care of. Now, at the two second mark, and these times are arbitrary, by the way, I'm gonna add another bookmark, and I'm gonna call this Resume Audio, okay? And there's nothing for Resume Audio as far as action is concerned. Don't worry about the exclamation mark here. It's just a warning that I haven't assigned any actions to it. I guess technically I could assign the action of your resume timeline, but there's really no need in this case here. Now, all I need to do is place the audio after both of these two bookmarks. So I'm just gonna position my playhead to be a 10th of a second there, and we'll just start audio from that playhead position. Now on this slide here, when we start the course, my start button, by default, it's set up to go to next slide, but I'm gonna change that, I'm gonna edit that, and what we're going to do is go under more here, scroll down until we see jump to bookmark, and we'll choose the resume audio bookmark. That's the second bookmark on the following slide. So we'll click done there. Each of these table of contents items will take you to one of three sections. So here's section one, we'll arrive here, we'll go to the next slide and then we'll arrive here and go back to the table of contents. But I'm gonna change this action and we're going to just edit that action. And rather than going to that particular slide, we're gonna choose more and we're going to jump to bookmark and we're gonna choose paused slide there. Press done. And similarly, we'll do the same thing on the end of the second lesson. We'll change that to jump to bookmark and also return it to the paused point on the slide there. And then our last slide here, same deal. So we'll edit that, change our action to jump to bookmark pause slide and then done. Okay, let's go ahead and preview this now. This course will focus on leadership communication strategies, enabling you to develop the skills necessary to communicate effectively as a leader, build strong relationships with team members, and inspire and motivate others towards achieving common goals. Okay, so that works perfectly. We hear the narration the first time we arrive on the table of contents. Let's visit the role of a dynamic leader lesson. And we'll click next. And we'll take ourselves back to table of contents. 
No audio this time, right? Because it's jumped to the bookmark where it pauses the slide. And that allows us to make other selections without having to listen to the preamble each time. Here we go. And once again. And third lesson. There you go. Perfect. Now your students can continue with the rest of the course or take the final quiz, whatever it is that you've set up for them. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.